I was trying to come up with a good hook here, but really this video is about how I use this NAS to replace Google Photos, because the one thing I hate more than subscriptions I barely use is when Docker containers just work, and you have no idea why. But also I hate the idea that my family photos and videos are out there being scanned and analyzed by big tech and AI to be used to tell someone out there what they should advertise to me next. This is the Drive Store 4 Pro by Asa Store. Pretty sure that's how you say it. The model number is AS3304TV2. Not to be confused with V1, this has a few upgrades from that older model. It's a four bay NAS that has pretty good build quality and two and a half gig networking at a reasonable price. I'm gonna be using mine to back up photos and videos from my phone automatically while I sleep. This isn't a full walkthrough or a how-to guide, just a quick explainer and overview of this NAS, plus a few different ways I intend to use it. All right, let's start with a quick disclaimer. Asa Store did send me this NAS to review, but as usual, no money exchanged hands, no matter how much I asked. They have no say in what I talk about here, and my opinions are my own. They also did not supply the drives that I'm using in this box. That came out of my own pocket. So if this is the kind of video that you enjoy and you feel like you'll learn something today, there are some Amazon affiliate links down in the description that won't impact what you pay, but help the channel make more videos like this. Now, let's talk about this magic storage box. We have a Realtek quad core CPU, so no Intel or Ryzen here, two gigs of DDR4 RAM and two and a half gig networking on board, plus a handful of USB 3.2 ports for external connections, probably extra storage and maybe some peripherals. The front of it's got some blinky LEDs and status light things, a power button, and a shiny black magnetic cover to where the drive sit. The drive caddy slides in and out of the chassis real easy and they click into place and they're toolless. Yeah, you may only get to use that toolless installation feature when you're initially installing the drives, but it really is super convenient. Once you get it plugged in, boot it up, go through the initial onboarding sequence and the menus, you'll get to where you need to choose how you want to provision your storage. This NAS offers many ways you can set this up, including single drives, JBOD, which stands for just a bunch of disks, RAID 0, 1, 5, 6, or RAID 10. In fact, I set mine up in a dual RAID 1 configuration. So out of the four six terabyte drives, I really cut my storage capacity in half, but with what I'm storing on here, I prefer the redundancy. One of the storage volumes is used for media like personal photos and videos, and the other I'm reserving for future use, which means you'll have to like and subscribe to find out more about that in the future when I do the thing. Speaking of what I'm storing on these drives, this is where we get to the title of the video about how you could cut ties with Google Drive and iCloud. Think about how much you spend every month or every year on cloud storage. Now compare that to a one-time cost of buying your own storage and making your own cloud. Not to be confused with own cloud. We're talking about two different things here, but stick with me, you're getting me off track. I tried about three or four different ways to set this up as a client server configuration with this NAS and my phone, and I really just wanted an easy button. And I think I might have found it. On the NAS, you can find an app called Photo Gallery 3 on the Asa Store App Store. Kind of rhymed. And then on your Android device, look for AI Photo 3. That's A I F O T O 3. Install these on their respective devices, go through your setup process and preferences to back up data from that device, and really that's it. It's stupid simple. In my preferences, I set my phone to back up media only when connected on Wi Fi and only when charging. So now when I plug my phone in at night, it automatically backs up all my photos and videos off of my phone, almost like mobile incremental backups. It's a thing. And when I started looking into what else this NAS could do, I found some pretty cool apps that I wanna check out. Like they have a security and surveillance with IP cameras app, which I believe is not just a dumping ground for surveillance footage, but an actual control center. Domain services like DNS and Nginx for reverse proxy, even some VPN options like Tailscale. So it looks like I got some decent supported options here as well. Now, is this the best storage box out there that I've ever seen? No. 
Not really. The two gigs of RAM being not upgradable on this thing is kind of tough. Not gonna lie. And I wish it had dual two and a half gig ethernet ports, but I believe that's what's the next model up from here. Things that this box doesn't, which would make sense. Dual networking and actual HDMI output on the device itself, which means you could put it in your living room next to your Xbox and plug it up directly to your TV, not have to bog down the CPU by transcoding or streaming over your network to a smart TV, say with like Plex or Jellyfin but what it does it does very well and that's all you can ask for i mean it's a 300 and something dollar storage device with multi-gig networking i'd say you get a pretty good spec list here for what you pay for and if you do want one with a few more bells and whistles that step up is their as 5304t that has those double nicks it has double the ram which is also upgradable to eight gigs i think hdmi on board with 10-bit 4k hardware transcoding and an intel celeron processor that's like a hundred bucks more. So yeah, it's not perfect, but it works. And it works well enough for what I'm trying to use it for. I've got local photo backups without any monthly fees, a NAS that doesn't scream for attention, and a setup that just quietly does its job while I sleep. Honestly, that's a win in my book. If you're thinking of building your own photo backup system or just dipping your toes into the home lab world, this might be a good starting point that won't break the bank. Like and subscribe if you want to see what I end up doing with that second storage volume. Because spoiler alert, it involves containers, mistakes, and a lot of swearing. Bitch.